Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to be trying out Ibis Paint on PC. Also, just a heads up, I'm sick, so I probably sound kind of sick. It's not too bad, it's just kind of a cold and I just kind of feel groggy and a little tired. Uh, but I'm not like bedridden or anything. <laughs> Making sure to rest and drink fluids. Uh, but anyways, about the video, many of you tell me that you use Ibis Paint for drawing and request I use it more often in my videos. If you don't know, Ibis Paint is a drawing app that is available on Android and Apple devices. It is free to use, so it's really accessible to lots of people. Plus, it's a really nice program that has a lot of features, but it's also pretty easy to use. I do really like using Ibis Paint when I'm working on my iPad, but the reason I don't use it much in my videos is because when I record my iPad, I need to be at a desk with the tablet flat on the table. And this position really hurts my neck after a while because I'm sitting with my neck out and looking straight down. Plus, drawing on my iPad does work, but it's not my preferred method. I prefer my PC setup much more. That being said, within the last year or so, Ibis Paint released a Windows version so that it can be used on PC. The thing is that the Windows version is a bit different from the Android and Apple versions. On Android and Apple, you can use the apps as long as you want and can watch an ad to unlock brushes. However, for the PC version, you get access to brushes without ads but you can only use the program for one hour each day. I could just buy the app for like $20 and use it for as long as I want, but I'm not sure how much I'll like Ibis Paint on PC. So me being the cheapskate that I am, I decided to try to make a finished illustration by only drawing for one hour each day. This illustration is for a video, so I am limited on how many days I can take to draw the illustration. My goal is to get it done in four days, so this equals four hours. So let's see if I can get it done in that amount of time. Spoilers, I don't. So this is the start of day one. Before jumping into Ibis Paint, I decided to do some preliminary sketches in my sketchbook. I'm doing this to plan out my idea for my illustration. That way I don't waste time in the program just trying to figure things out. I've been playing the new Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom in my free time. So I've been really wanting to make some fan art for it. I love it so much. It's so good. I was thinking about drawing Link, but I really love Zelda's outfit in the game, so I wanted to draw her. At first, I was thinking of drawing her with her head turned in three-quarter view, but I kind of liked this idea of her looking down at the Master Sword. After I got an idea for the composition, I decided to do some study sketches of Zelda's outfit. She has a lot of different accessories and details, so to help me prepare and to hopefully help me draw them faster, I thought doing some sketches of them may help. Once I was feeling prepared, I decided to take things to Ibis Paint. At first, I didn't know when the timer started, so I was trying to get through these menu areas kind of fast. I make a new canvas and make it a decent size. It's a bit smaller than my usual. I wasn't sure how much the program can handle, so I decided to play it safe and make it a little smaller. And here we can see my timer starts when I open my canvas. Since this is my first time in Ibis Paint on PC, it is showing me a tutorial on how to do things. This was actually kind of helpful because on mobile devices, you do a lot of the canvas control with the touchscreen. But on PC, this isn't really an option, so you have to use a combination of keyboard and mouse to do things, like rotate the canvas and stuff instead of hand gestures. So after spending some time clicking around, I decided to start drawing. I chose to use a texture pen because, I don't know, I like texture. <laughs> Since Zelda is in front view, I decided to turn on the symmetrical ruler. That way, what I draw on one side is also drawn on the other. This makes things easier for me and will also help save time. I just start sketching out the head as usual, but quickly realized I wanted some references to look at. In Clip Studio Paint, I often just open another canvas and have it somewhere for me to look at. But in Ibis Paint, we have this nifty little reference window where you can add your references. I pre-made a sheet of different screenshots I took when playing the game. And can I say, I was so happy that I took these. I didn't want to search for her design on Google because I'm trying my best to avoid spoilers. So it was really nice being able to grab these pictures from my Switch. My obsession of taking screenshots has paid off. <laughs> in a recent video, I mentioned I wanted to do a video that focused on only one illustration instead of multiple. That way I can talk more in depth about the process and share more of the footage with you. Since this challenge kind of forces me to draw only one picture, I am hoping I can show you more of the process. It is a bit different from my usual process since I am using a new program, but I hope you still find it interesting. For sketching Zelda's headpiece, I brought in a single larger reference. I was okay with my details not being 100% accurate, but I wanted to get pretty close. So I wanted to have a clear reference to look at. 
So this is my first rough sketch. The point of it is for me to get an idea of how I want to draw things and where things need to go. It lets me play around with the sketch, like transform and move things without needing to worry about keeping everything neat and clean. When I first started drawing, the concept of drawing something that's just going to be erased or not in the final picture seemed like a waste of time. So I used to never draw guidelines or sketches. <laughs> Eventually I learned they are very helpful. But I do know there are some master artists that make amazing art without any sketches or guidelines. I am not one of them. I need to sketch beforehand. <laughs> During the sketching process, I kept feeling like my sketching felt kind of off or weird, but I couldn't quite place my finger on it. I thought maybe it was just because it was a new program with a new brush, but later I eventually figure out why things feel weird. For some reason, the pressure sensitivity is not working. I don't think it's my tablet because the pressure works in Clipsio Paint. It seems like the program is maybe not picking up my tablet because it says there are no available styluses in the settings area. I spent some time trying to figure out the issue with the pressure, but decided to just keep sketching. I have a timer that's counting down and I don't want to waste a lot of time. My plan was to do some Google searching once I finished the first session to maybe try to solve the problem. Uh, but anyways, now I'm sketching out the torso. When doing this, I plan out where the trap muscle is by drawing diagonal lines and then the collarbone. This helps me visualize the shape of it. Then I kind of draw a teardrop like shape to help me get an idea of the shape of the shoulder area. If I'm drawing more complicated poses, this is all a bit more messy and I do a bit more connecting and playing around. But since this is a simple pose, I can figure out a lot of it in my head and only need to put down the more essential guidelines. I did notice I didn't have a very good reference for the Master Sword from the front view. So I actually used my Switch user icon as a reference. <laughs> Thankfully, Nintendo has this very pretty picture of Zelda you can use for your icon. It was a very helpful reference. This is where I wasted a decent amount of time. I couldn't figure out how I wanted to draw the hands. I tried several different options and I found that my issue was that I was trying to draw the hand first and then figure out the arm. However, in this case, it just wasn't working. I was finally able to draw a pose when I drew in the arm and then the hand. Also, if you're wondering why I draw the arm all swirly like this, it's a technique to help me visualize the foreshortening of the arm and its form in the perspective. It can be hard to picture foreshortening when you just draw the outside lines of a shape. And by drawing the kind of coily lines, it can help you build up the form and see it more. Also, if you see things pop up in the corner, that's either my computer notifying me or my fiance messaging me. I'm using a different screen recorder because Ibis Paint wouldn't let me use my normal one. And this recorder records my whole screen, not just the program like my other one does. So you can see other windows that pop up. So yeah, you can see the notifications from my fiance messaging me on his work breaks. I am blurring them out so you can't see what he's saying. <laughs> also, I was replying to him, I just cut out that part. Eventually, I did need to tell him that I can't talk right now and that I need to draw. I explained the challenge to him later. <laughs> With 15 minutes left in this first session, I started my cleanup sketch. I knew I wouldn't be able to finish it, but wanted to get as much done as I could. One thing I am noticing about this footage is that I don't rotate my canvas very much. And I think that's because I don't have the muscle memory down for rotating the canvas. So it's easier for me to just not to. <laughs> but it's actually kind of nice because then I can speed the footage up a lot without making you all super dizzy. Because in Clip Studio Paint, I turn the canvas a lot and flip it and move it all around a ton. But in this one, I wasn't totally sure how to do it super easily. So it stays more stationary. Also, when sketching out Zelda's headpiece, doing the sketches in my sketchbook first really helped. I had a decent idea of the design and was able to refer to my sketchbook, so drawing it went pretty smoothly. I feel like it would have felt a lot more complicated if I hadn't done those studies beforehand. And once an hour was up, Ibis Paint made me stop drawing, and this is the end of session one. After my session ended, I tried to find some info about the pressure sensitivity not working. And I couldn't find much. I tried different things that people recommended, but nothing really worked. During the second session that you're watching, I did try to play around with the brush settings and try different brushes. Once again, nothing was really seeming to work. And this is kind of a bummer. Uh, but I did try installing Ibis Paint on my laptop in my room and using my other drawing tablet down there. It's a drawing tablet that I'm reviewing at the moment. And for some reason, it does work on my laptop. The pressure sensitivity works perfectly fine. It's just for some reason on the upstairs one, Ibis Paint doesn't seem to recognize my tablet. So yeah, it must be something to do with my computer upstairs because it did totally work on my laptop. 
Another thing it could be is that I did disable Windows Ink when I first got my computer and it seems like Ibis Paint may have something to do with Windows Ink. And I did try to reactivate it and I kind of did, but I couldn't totally figure out how to completely reactivate it. So I may have messed something up on my computer. So yeah, it's probably just something on my end with my computer because it worked perfectly fine on my laptop. But anyways, during session two, my goal was to get the cleanup sketch and line art done and we are speeding through it because I don't have a ton to say. I'm just drawing over my rough sketch and making my lines more neat. The hands did give me a bit of trouble. At first I had one hand down and the other kind of resting on top of the sword, but it kind of just looked awkward. So I ended up just copying the first hand and flipping it. I felt like I was wasting a lot of time on the hands. So I did this to try to catch back up on time. Like I mentioned, I was hoping to do a cleanup sketch and line art during this session. However, the cleanup took me a decent amount of time. And because my pressure sensitivity is not working, line art seemed like it would be a pain to do. So I decided to forego line art and we will work with just my cleanup sketch instead. With just a few minutes left, I start filling in the base colors. Also, a quick side note, when I was doing this, I noticed that the pen was tapering a bit if I drew really light and quick. And so does this mean the pressure sensitivity is kind of working? I have no idea. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it works just fine on my laptop but my PC is acting weird. Also, I didn't test my laptop until after I finished this picture. Uh, so yeah, I wish I would have thought of that earlier <laughs> because then I could have had pressure sensitivity, but hindsight is 2020. Uh, but anyways, this is the end of session two and now we're on to day three. Because I did choose to skip line art, I need to fill in a lot of my sketch manually since it is a bit messy and has a texture to it. I can't really just use the paint bucket tool because it won't fill in the best with the messy line work. So I just outline the shapes of the color and then fill in the shapes I draw. I set the paint bucket tool to current layer so it only pays attention to the layer I'm currently on. And yeah, I kind of just keep repeating this process of outlining and filling in the different colors. Also, the footage captured by this paint is a little glitched. For some reason, it has these gaps in it that's not in the actual picture or the footage I recorded myself. I'm not sure why this is happening. <laughs> Filling in the base colors is very boring and took almost the entire third session. I do feel like I was working slower in Ibis Paint and this makes sense because my muscle memory isn't super used to it. I would often have to pause and think about where things are or how to do things. I don't feel like this picture would have taken me as long in Clip Studio Paint, but that's to be expected when using a program you are less familiar with. For the last few minutes of the session, I'd started shading. To get rid of the hatching, I did make a layer above all my others and went in with a shadow color to clean things up. I kind of end up needing to undo this because it doesn't really work with my shading that I apply later. For the shading, I thought it'd be fastest to clip a layer to my color folder and start going in with a muted purple set to multiply. That way I don't have to keep changing colors and also clipping layers to different parts of the coloring. I do need to be a bit more careful to only draw in the areas I want since I am clipped to all the coloring, but it's still overall faster and easier. Oh, and here's where I had to fix that whole shading thing. I basically just had to get rid of the hatching and then set that shadow layer to multiply so it blends correctly with my purple shading. Also, I changed the side that I indicated Zelda's nose bridge. I find it's often better to draw the line for the bridge on the side that's going to have more shadow. The light is coming from the right, so a lot of the shadow will be on the left. So I flip her nose bridge to be curving towards the left. And with this last bit of shading applied, session three is done. Now we are on to what I was hoping would be the final session, day four. I started off day four by alpha locking my shadow layer and adding a pink rim and blue rim to the shading. The pink helps it look warmer when it's by the light and the blue makes the shadows look cooler and provides some bounce light from the sky. When I was young, if I wanted to apply multiple colors for the shading, I would do a process of layering and blending out each color layer. But now I just make one shadow layer the way I want and then add colors by alpha locking it. Alpha locking makes it so you can only draw on the things drawn on that layer and it will also keep the opacity. It's a way easier process than what I used to do. Also, I did want to mention that I'm just using all of the basic brushes and I didn't really edit them at all. The only things I changed were the size and opacity to make the brush work for what I needed. For the coloring, I mostly used the Dip Pen Hard, Dip Pen Soft, and Airbrush. I mostly used the airbrush to fade out the shading I applied with the pen, and also to apply soft shadows. 
I did occasionally use the smudging tool to blend out the colors and adjust their shape a bit, but I don't use it a ton. The shading process was sort of similar to my usual, but also very different. Not really having pressure sensitivity made things kind of tricky since it's something I'm really used to having. I had to very often adjust my brush size at the bottom of the screen, and this was also making things take longer. Oh, also about this screen, it was interesting having such a blank work area. In Clip Studio Paint, I'm kind of surrounded by buttons and settings. But with having Ibis Paint on my drawing tablet, it felt like I had a lot of free space and I kind of liked it. But at the same time, this does make it so I have to open more menus to access things, which makes them not as accessible. Like in Clip Studio Paint, to make a new layer, I just press the new layer button. But in Ibis Paint, I have to open the layer menu and then press the layer button. It's not a huge deal, but with how often I make layers, this extra click starts to add up. <laughs> For the background, I am keeping it pretty simple. I'm going to paint in some soft cloud-like shapes. I often use white or slightly off-white colors for clouds, but in the screenshots I took, I noticed the clouds are often a more cream color. So that's what I used for my clouds. It does give them a kind of different feeling. It helps them feel kind of warmer. I always forget that Breath of the Wild Zelda's eyes are green. In my head, they are always blue. And I think that's because many of the other Zeldas have blue eyes, like OOT Zelda, TP Zelda, SS Zelda, OOA and OOS Zelda. You get the idea, her eyes are most often blue. <laughs> so her eyes being green always throws me off, but I do think they are really pretty and they really work nicely with her new outfit. Also, Tears of the Kingdom is so much fun. I won't say any spoilers, but it's so good. I keep trying to fit in time to play it, but I haven't gotten to play it a ton. I take that back, I have played it for several hours, but it's such a huge game that several hours isn't much. <laughs> I was a bit worried about the game feeling too similar to Breath of the Wild, like the overworld map wouldn't feel very different, but they did a great job at making everything feel fresh and different. It's like I know where I am, but it doesn't feel like the same place anymore. So far I've beaten the Rito and Goron areas. I'm not totally sure where I plan to go next, I'm feeling torn between the Gerudo and the Zora. The game does kind of guide you or give you hints as to where you should maybe go next. So maybe I'll just wait to see which one it recommends. So far I've kind of just been exploring and doing extra side quest stuff. I feel like I wanted to talk about so many of the mechanics and the different things that surprised me. But yeah, I don't want to spoil stuff so I won't. Like I said, I was hoping I would be able to finish the picture with this session and it is close. But it feels like it needs some more polish and details to make it pop. So even though it was going to make things kind of tight, I decided to work on it another day. So being that I only had an hour to work with for the final highlights and rendering, I decided to just make a layer above all my other layers and use a brush set to a low opacity to add extra shading and highlights. If I needed to, I used the smudge tool to blend them out or soften them. I didn't want to waste time switching and making layers, so I felt like this was the fastest option. Also, I wasn't worrying too much about being super clean. This piece is overall a bit more sketchy and messy, so I decided to just embrace it. Mostly because I was running out of time. <laughs> I could not push the picture to another day. Also, I forgot to mention I also chose this for my video this week because I had a very busy week and was kind of only able to draw for one hour a day. Even then, I kind of had to squeeze it in here and there. I was helping my fiance move, had my wedding dress fitting, my sister's birthday, and we also got a place booked for the wedding reception. Yay! We finally found a place that was available, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, this video idea sounded fun and interesting, but also worked with my busy schedule this week. Plus, now I'm sick today. I kind of started feeling a little sick yesterday, but I wasn't totally sure. And today I feel very sick, so yeah. It's good I did this video this week. I don't know if I would have been able to fit working on a normal video. <laughs> so I was feeling more happy with the rendering now. And it's time for the final touches. I made a new layer from my canvas, so I have my picture on one layer. Then I make a duplicate. I'm going to take this duplicate and blur it in the filter area. I blur the duplicate so I can erase it in some areas to reveal the crisp version underneath. This helps draw in the viewer's eye to the focal point and also hide some of the messiness. <laughs> To add some light rays, I drew some soft lines on their own layer and then used the filter God Rays to make them look extra light ray -y. To add more movement to the wind, I decided to add some golden leaves. The trees in the sky all have yellowy color leaves and they're really pretty so I wanted to include them. To give them more motion, I apply some motion blur to them along with some Gaussian blur. I did the same thing again with some larger leaves in the foreground and I thought it would help add some depth. 
Well, I should probably share my thoughts on what I think of Ibis Paint on PC. It is really cool, and I do like using Ibis Paint more on my computer than my iPad. But I do wish I could figure out the pressure sensitivity being weird. Like I said, I think I messed up Windows Ink on my computer, and maybe that's why it's not working. But Ibis Paint also just doesn't want to pick up my tablet. But it does work fine on my laptop, so maybe if I want to use it for future videos, I can just use my laptop and my setup in my room. But I was hoping I'd be able to use my upstairs setup because that's a little bit more convenient. Uh, but yeah, I do think it's cool being able to use Ibis Paint on the PC. And I do think it'd be cool to make videos with it. Because that way I'm able to share my process in Ibis Paint. And maybe it can help some of you that use Ibis Paint. And I know many of you do. Of course, I will continue to use Clip Studio Paint as well. But it's fun to have variety. But yeah, if you have any ideas of how to fix Windows Ink or how to make Ibis Paint recognize my tablet. Uh, let me know down in the comments. <laughs> so here's my finished drawing of Zelda from Tears of the Kingdom. It was very interesting only working on a picture for one hour each day. A lot of times I'll work on a picture for two to three hours at a time. So doing a bunch of shorter sessions felt very different. It made me really rush and stay focused. <laughs> I had to really stay in the zone. And I hope you like how the picture turned out and enjoyed seeing me use Ibis Paint. I'm really happy I got to draw Zelda. I've been really wanting to draw her. So that's all for this video, but before we end, I want to say a super big thank you to my awesome YouTube members and Patreon patrons for their support. It means so much to me. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!